Five 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 Army Five Air Force. Four. 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 Over 10,000 servant trainers were built for both the Navy and the Army, plus thousands more in the form of spare parts. The U.S. Navy was the first service to show interest in the Spearman. They took delivery of their first one in 1934, almost seven years before America entered World War II. Stearman was known by the U.S. Navy pilots as the Yellow Peril. And it was the primary trainer for almost all World War II Navy pilots. It had two different engine airframe combinations. One was a 220 horsepower continental engine. The other was the 225 horsepower Lycoming. It had a cruising speed with each engine of about 100 miles an hour. A very simple airplane in terms of its systems. The Stearman had a fixed pitch propeller. The angle of the blade could not be changed. Very simple instruments inside. What the pilots then called needle ball and airspeed. To learn how to fly coordinated flight, controlling the stick and the rudder. To land, to take off. And as they say, flying is the second most wonderful experience known to mankind. What's number one? Landing. Air boss Wayne Boggs says this is this airplane is a handful to fly. One of the reasons is because is the landing gear is so close together compared to airplanes like the P-51 Mustang, much easier to handle on the ground. Flying it today, we got our buddies Kerry Harden from Starkville, Mississippi, and from Danville, California, Bill Austin. Airplane flown by Bill Austin in the Army Air Force version. That's uh, that's the PT-17. Now there were three different designations of that airframe depending on the motor it had on it. If it, was a, if it had a Lycoming engine, it had a uh, two, uh, 225 horsepower on the Lycoming engine. They call it a PT-13. If it had a Continental engine at 220 horsepower, they called it the PT-17. And if it had a Jacobs engine on it, they called it the PT-18. In any respect, they called it the Stearman. It was also used by the Royal Canadian Air Force, and they called it the K-N-E-T, K-A-Y-D-E-T. But it was the design of Lloyd Stearman who then sold out to Boeing Aircraft and became the Stearman Division of Boeing Aircraft. The Model 75 became the primary trainer with over 10,000 copies, as I mentioned, built. The span of the wings, just 32 feet 2 inches. And the Royal Canadian Air Force Cadet, that is a name that has stuck after the war when they became surplus aircraft. A number of them found their way into the agricultural spraying business. And then, they hung a different engine on it. They put a Pratt & Whitney nine-cylinder radial engine on it that developed 450 horsepower. And it has continued to be, for many, many years, a favorite of air show performers who want to take a bike plate out and use some propeller to uh, get an optimum angle of the blade for takeoff and climb and also for cruise performance, but still a fixed landing gear. After basic training, which also lasted three months, the pilot took a long time of training, they continue on to the advanced training. And that would be the North American Tech, the Navy called the SMJ, and the Army Air Corps called the uh, AT-6. And we'll see one of those T-6s. Much heavier airplane, all metal. I will say that the uh, Pegasus home base was cloudy. Retractable so landing gear, yeah. a continually <laughs> variable pitch or angle of play of propeller. And uh, also has significant instrumentation systems on it. So a pilot cadet could actually learn to fly without reference to the horizon and could fly, as they say, on instruments. But again, here comes Carrie and Bill in these gorgeous 
one more to primary train. before they land, so this would be a great time to get a picture of Slows down. 